Alright guys, Ace and Corey from Dream Team Inc. with our first vault tutorial. The first thing we're going to cover is how to make the fuel cells for the fission reactor. It's comprised of empty cells and uranium-235 and 238 if you're making a low enriched fuel cell, or 235 and 235 and another 235 if you're going with a high enriched, which we'll cover the difference. So for making the uranium, you're going to want to set up something similar to this. You're going to need we're, chemical extraction. We're going to go over that over here when we rebuild. Yeah, when... Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to need a chemical extractor. Chemical extractor is optional. It just gets you additional uranium per ore. You're going to, at the very least, need a chemical boiler, a gas centrifuge, some form of power and a water pump. So Corey will cover how to craft it. All right. So first, you're most likely going to want to start out with your electric pump. It's going to need an unlimited source of water um, and some upgrades as you please. So from the electric pump, you're going to want to pump water out in a pattern kind of like this. You guys can set up how you want, but this is what we found to be pretty uh, efficient. So after you wire this, wire some power up the back of it. Just like that. You're gonna want it one higher than what I just did. Because you're dumb. And then you're gonna want to start with your chemical extractor. So if you want, you can also place a hopper right on top, like I did over there, to make sure that you're always inputting. Um, uranium into here. So as you put the uranium into here, it's going to turn it into yellow cake, which is then going to go into the chemical boiler. And you can easily automate this using log logistical transported pipes. And what I usually do is I just uh, use a configurator and I simply set it to pull like this, and it'll eventually pull out the yellow cake when it's done crafting. So to do that, you're going to want to shift right click on the entrance to the chemical extractor until you see in chat that it says to pull the item. And then you do the same thing for your chemical boiler to where it says push. Then it will automatically put your yellow cake into your chemical boiler and it will turn it into, you'll see in a second, uranium hexachloride. Yep. Um, and to take this uranium hexafluoride right out, you're going to want to put a a mechanical pipe on its side make sure it's on its side and then you probably didn't see but i placed the gas centrifuge down here to the side because it has to import it from the back and for power for the gas centrifuge you're actually going to want to power it from underneath so you're going to want to dig a hole underneath like i am right now and power it from underneath with universal cables or whatever you guys are using so and if your sure. gas centrifuge or any of your machines aren't wanting to face the direction you need them to, you can use the Physico Wrench 5042 to change the direction so that it complies a little better. Yep, exactly. And so that's pretty much how you make the automation automation for a or your. So moving from the setup to the one we already have in progress, you can use a hopper to move your uranium ore into your chemical extractor. And your chemical extractor, as we just covered, moves the yellow cake into your, it turns it into uranium hexafluoride, which gets moved into your gas centrifuge. This uses, a, I mean, the gas centrifuge turns uranium hexafluoride into uranium-235 and 238. I think it produces uranium-235 at a rate of 12.5%. So you're going to be getting a lot more 238 while you're doing this. You can always yeah. just put your 238 into your chemical boiler, and it will turn it into uranium hexafluoride. So you can purely get 235. It just takes a lot longer. And, and gonna... it'll take a lot more uranium ore. Yep, that too. Now we'll move over to the fission reactor setup. So for the fission reactor setup, you can make it all kinds of sizes. If you're 
low on space, you can make it with just the big seam turbine in the middle without the size. So it varies in you don't have to use this one size. It is so just for this the, the biggest allowable version the game has. It will not the fission reactor will not heat larger than a five by five water source. It needs to be at most and at least two blocks deep so that your fission reactor is covered, but your steam turbines can still touch the water source block. Exactly. So now I'm going to start setting it up. So I'm going to set up the small version of it and just because you guys can see. Yeah, I like thinking glass. It's nice. It's really pretty. One too long. All right, so you're gonna want a three by three area in the middle, and a lot of people, um, a lot of people get mixed up. You can only make it too high, and you can place the steam turbines on the top. If you make it any taller, the steam turbines won't take in any steam, and then you don't got power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the way we got this big steam turbine as you see over here is you place a three by three row of steam turbines and you take that previously mentioned Vizca wrench 5042 and you right click in the center and it'll produce a more efficient larger single steam turbine yep and now i'm gonna use glow so with the carpenter's mod I believe so. Um, uh, forge no, microblock. Forge microblock. You can... No. You can make microblocks so it'll block water from entering or exiting. And you can still, you can still walk exit. through. Yeah. So it's like a Which door, makes it really nice. Except prettier. If you don't have this, you can just use slabs. Place a slab on the bottom, place a slab on the you top. Water won't be able to get through. trap doors. Everyone knows how to stop water from breaking. Yep, exactly. Okay, so next you're going to want to place your fission reactor right in the center. Right in the center. Yeah, right in the center. Um, and on top of your fission reactor, you're going to want to put a... You're going to want to put an insertable control rod. <laughs> okay, so with the um, insertable control rod, you're just going to want to place it... Oh. So you're going to want to place it right on top before you did it right. He's never used this before. It allows you to control how much the rod is inserted, as the name might suggest. The crafting recipe, that is not the wrong crafting recipe, is shown right here. I mean, if you have any eye, there's really no point for me to show you one thing. For me to show you any recipe, but, you know, here I am being extra. Here you are. All right. So now you're just going to want to go ahead and grab some water, which we didn't have some. So just had to grab some really quick. Yeah, use it all. So an alternative to the insertable control rod is using a temperature probe and a piston to push a normal control rod over. But that's archaic and caveman-like. Yeah, well, that's what I used to use. So that's some mad shit. Yeah, that's what common plebeians use. Yeah, I should have. So. <laughs> I'm considered a common plebeian. Whatever. <laughs> um, and what will happen is usually, or every once in a while, you'll notice that some of your water is disappearing. And that just that's just due to evaporation with the steam. You're just going to place some new water in there. And I'm well, not going to use you guys. all water source blocks. You won't have that issue. Yeah. As it automatically replenishes itself as yeah. water does. And the reason why you want the insertable control web is because if you don't manage the temperature, your entire fission reactor will actually blow. Up. Now, that won't happen with the low enriched fuel cell, but with the high enriched fuel cell, that will happen. And so now, yeah, so you pretty much just make the high, I'm getting. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Yeah, oh god. Ori. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's bad. 
throw my stuff in there, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, what just happened? Yeah, you definitely need a hazmat suit. And the one who doesn't need it is using it. <laughs> as you can see, um, uranium is radioactive. In order to handle it, you'll need a hazmat suit, such as the one that Corey is wearing. Thanks for my stuff pack, Corey. So you'll need a hazmat suit, otherwise you take radiation damage. And it hurts a lot. It hurts quickly. So what Corey was trying to show you with this fission rod, if you put a high enriched in there, it, the temperature will quickly get out of control, and it will blow up, leaving a radioactive mess. So I'm going to show you guys how fast this actually fills up a ultimate energy cube to spot. Go energy power bam. Lots so of lots of energy. That's all the power you need. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's all.